Oh, Katie and man, it's 1501 Smoother Pop. You know, I'm rocking like a cut off stocking, man. I just jumped out the porch with Dirty Glove Bells. Right, so we got young Smoothie jumping off the porch with us today. Okay then, man. How you feeling today, bro? I'm feeling good. I'm glad to be here. Yes, sir, man. Yes, sir. Yeah, you had popped up with the rest of 1501 like a month ago, and you told me, it was like, I'm coming to sit on that porch soon. Yeah, man. I'll be right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, nah, so I appreciate you swinging by today, too, man. Yes, I'm glad. I'm happy to be in the A, man, for yeah. real. I see you've been going crazy out here in Atlanta, man. What, what else have you been working on, man? Let the folks know. Man, just, uh, I'm getting ready to drop this uh, Chad Butler 2 video. Hmm. Then working on the tape coming this summer. So we just been busy, man. Corbin had me, you know, I've been in the yo. Okay. We've been moving around, just working this single, getting to it, man, letting the folks see me. Yeah, absolutely, yes, man. Sir. And it looks like Atlanta's been showing you a lot of good love out here, too, man. Been, been... Atlanta been fucking with me, and I'm fucking with Atlanta, man. Yes, yeah, <laughs> sir. For real. <laughs> Nah, man. Yeah. How was it like at South by this year, man? It looked turned up like the old South by, man. Hey, I, I really had me one of them the baby South by South wishes, man. Uh -huh. No lie. I turned up, turned up at every show. You feel me? Every show was good. They was singing the singing the word to the song. You feel me? So, and I jumped out there in that white that white fur, that white that white <laughs> trench coat. You hear me? I was killing them. You wasn't hiding that shit, man. With Pimp C say TV ain't got no temperature, baby. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I fuck with that, man. Yes, sir. All right, man. So, you know, you from Texas, Arcana, man. Man, I don't know shit about this town except for it's in Texas, it's in yeah. Arkansas, it's in both. How the fuck? <laughs> yeah, Texas County, man, it's the, uh, it's the country. It's Northeast Texas. And, uh, you know, shit, it's Cleason Streets out there, baby. You feel me? That's mm -hmm. it. Cleason Streets, you either gonna play sports or shit. You in, the, you, in the, you in the field for real. You feel me? One of the two. Yeah. So, it ain't really a lot going on now, there, you feel me, for as like big opportunities for like music and shit like that. We don't really got the platform. So for me to be like one of the first to come out of there and I, I even out of the region of East Texas, like it's a big thing. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely feel like East Texas is slept on, but there's a lot of talent coming out of them talent. towns, man. It's some talent coming out of there, man. Like I say, like it's real slept on the light. Kind of just, just now starting to get shined on like East Texas, but mm -hmm. we're gonna make shit shine bright now for real. Absolutely, man. So when would you say you jumped off the porch? How old were you, man? Oh, uh, shit, like 13, 13 years old. We had a, a Texas County. You got it's like this shit. You know, it's Texas and Arkansas in one city. Mm -hmm. It's two cities in one state. So growing up, but since before I was born, like my brothers and my my daddy, it was a Texas Arkansas beef. Really? You know, so yeah, so like even though y'all in the same city, we in the same city, but Texas and Arkansas, it's like a big rivalry game too. It's like like the tenth biggest football rivalry in like the in the country. Mm. So shit, we we never liked each other growing up. We don't know why. You know what I'm saying? We never knew why. Just growing up, like we know, oh, we don't fuck with the other side of town. So it made it like real hostile growing up. Like you know, for all the clubs in Arkansas. And they're out of the movies, the, the malls, everything else in Texas. So we got okay. across back paths constantly. Yeah. And it was always on some, it's some on-site shit. Like we, you can tell an Arkansas nigga from a Texas nigga, we look different. How so? What, what's some of the differences between the two then? Man, I ain't gonna say Arkansas. Arkansas niggas was all like, they was always like taller. They was <laughs> dark skin. Most of the niggas over there were dark skin. They were tall tees and shit like that. They just looked rougher than we did. We was like on some fly shit, Arkansas, Arkansas, they was like hustlers. Hmm. And we was kind of like, we was the rough, we was rougher, we was rougher, but they looked rougher. You know, we like to dress up. We had the mall and shit. Like I said, they can't go to the mall <laughs> all the time. You know, if they do, they got to pay for that shit some type of way. They ain't just paying for clothes, you hear me? <laughs> nah, that shit wild right there. No, Is it still me. divided like that today? It, it ain't, it, not as much. Cause okay. you know, kind of with the music, music kind of brung shit together. Huh. Texas and Arkansas guys start working together, start getting a little money together. So it's kind of, it died down. It, it, it'll, it'll flare back up every now and then, but it ain't nothing like it used to be. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of died, chilled out like 2017. Okay, yeah. okay. And you went to college to play ball? Yeah, man, I went to uh, University of Wyoming. Oh true, shit! True freshman though, too. I, I played. You feel me? I ain't there go. I played though. Nah, if you going out to Wyoming, you going to play. I'm damn going it, to right? play. I'm going to get on that field, man. I did that. 
Yeah. Yes, sir. So what you think of Wyoming when you get out there, man? That, is there anything out there? Is it just the college? Or what city were you guys in? Man, it was a culture shock. I was in Laramie. Mm. So uh, when I go on my visit, you know, I see the team. I see my, t the, my future teammates. But when we go out, you know, I notice it's a culture shock. Like, shit, I ain't seen nothing like this. Like, this many, this many white people up here. Like, and they ain't seen... They ain't never seen a black dude with gold teeth. Like, For real. They had just started recruiting Texas. They had recruited my cousin earlier he had, the year before. He went up there. So he was kind of like the first introduction they had to like country niggas. Like, oh, these niggas is hood. Like, they, they <laughs> ghetto as fuck. So when I come up there, I'm sagging. I got gold teeth. Like, they never seen that shit before. So it was like a custom shock for both of us. Oh, shit. It was different. So what position were you playing in college? Running back, man. D, okay. running back, y'all, like Petey. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So how many years did you do up there then? Uh, I, I played at uh, Wyoming for a year. I was there a year and a half. I ended up getting kicked off the team. I uh, caught a uh, assault charge up there. Caught a assault charge uh, after a party or something, after a party or an event. So, did you end up catching probation out there? What, what happened with that charge? Did they just drop it or? Man, they ended up dropping it. They ended up dropping it because it was kind of like a hate crime, you know. Uh, like I said, it was in a predominantly white state, mm -hmm. city. So, she, some shit ended up happening with like some bouncers and uh, some wrestlers that went to the school. Oh, really? And some, uh, some shit ended up happening and shit, I hit somebody. That was it, broke his nose, broke his jaw and shit. <laughs> they want the press charge, they press charges initially, but. They dropped them when they found out like what happened and shit like that. Yeah. Oh, you blessed. Not you know to have to do like probation up there yeah. where And that's the perks of playing football and, and being good at it though. Like so you get away, you do get away with little shit like that. Nah, for real. Thanks. So when you came back down to um to your city then, did you focus on music right then or what you do? Man, when I stopped playing ball, I uh I really was just I, I came back and I started training. I started training after college. I had some opportunities to go play professionally. So okay. I had, had some workouts with some teams. So I wouldn't train for like a year, but I was making music at the same time. I'd already uh. said like, fuck, if this shit don't work, I've been saying it cleats the streets. So if this shit don't work, shit, I know what I'm finna do. I'm finna go make music. I'm finna go get in the field. So uh, when I was training and doing that, I was making music at the same time. And eventually I was just like, I got the call like, hey, you, you know what I'm saying? If somebody go down, we gonna bring you in, you know what I'm saying, for some workouts again. I'm like, fuck this, I've been going to Europe, you know what I'm saying? I'm oh, gonna get, I'm gonna rap for real. Cause you know, you can't really do that and try to play sports like yeah. that, cause the image. So shit, I'm like, fuck that, I'm gonna I'm gonna really rap. And like 2018, or it might've been 17, I dropped my first song and shit. That bitch, Letter to Mama, that motherfucker went crazy. That's my first video really? that hit a million, yeah. That's it. Did you expect that one to go up like that? Like you said, that's your first song. Man, I, it was one of them songs. I made that bitch in like 20 minutes, bro, like 15, 20 minutes for my mama. My mama kept on my ass like, hey, make, make a song for me. You need to make a song. It's going to go viral. That's what she used to say. <laughs> it's going to go viral. You make a song for me. I'm like, hell no. Nah. You know what I'm saying? But I fuck around and it did. And she asked me one day. I'm like, fuck it. She keep asking me. So I fuck around and made the song. Man, I posted. College kid. Uh, they end up posting it. Okay. College kid posted it, and it went up. They say she's posted it. It went up, and the shit, it just never stopped. But me being from the country, like, like I said, nobody had really done that shit before. I was the first person to do that shit. So like, I didn't know how to capitalize off that shit. Or, hmm. I was just walking around that bitch with a million views. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Got some future money. That's okay. It. What'd your mom think of the song though? What'd what she say? Good, and she said, yeah. I told you so. She want one right now. She want another one. <laughs> <laughs> she want a part two, huh? Yeah, she want part two. <laughs> Thanks. So who are some of your musical influences, Smoothie? Oh, uh, Pimp C. Pimp C, I got Pimp C tatted on me, man. I, I got, see that, man. That's my favorite rapper. Oh, uh, and that's my favorite rapper out of Texas. Boosie, probably my all time favorite. Lil Boosie, uh, Juvenile. Okay. Juvenile, just being from Texas County, we like in the middle of the block. 50 minutes from Shreveport, we two hours from Little Rock, two hours from Dallas, so we kind of like Oklahoma right there. We like an hour from Oklahoma. Mm. So we like in a melting pot, it's in a mix of everything. So like Juvenile, No Limit, Boosted, Pimp C, that's what i say. Okay. DSR too. DSR was a Dallas group yeah. that came mm -hmm. up. You know, I grew up listening to them, just being a young Texas kid. That's kind of like where that flow come from. 
Okay. So what was it about Pimp C that you really fucked with to the point to where it's like, man, I'm gonna get this man tatted on my arm, man. Man, I fucked with him as a person, like not just the music. Before I knew who Pimp C was, like how I reacted to certain situations and shit like that, like that'll go on. I'm like, damn, I, I, I might've been tripping. You know, you know, Pimp C was real like dramatic about how he come back, he don't bite his tongue. So when I ran across UGK and I started watching Pimp C, I took a liking to him because of how he responded, just like watching his interviews and shit. I be like, damn, I would have responded the exact same way. Like, this is the shit I be doing already. So it was like, damn, I'm, I act just like this dude. So I kind of like took a liking to him. Yeah. It was a huge loss when he passed, man, because yeah. he wouldn't bite his tongue for nobody. He wouldn't man. bite his tongue. He would have loved me right now. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm <laughs> kicking my shit for him. Nah, for real. All right, so. We had to bring Carl Crawford up here, man, since you're you know, the newest member to 1501. So, sure. so, Carl, just go ahead and talk about how you uh, discovered Smoothie, man. Uh, I discovered Smoothie right in my, stu right in my studio. Uh, you know, it was one of those gifts that kind of just come in your hand. But he's been, been working with one of my producers that I had, uh, that, not that I have, that I have, uh, Sergeant Jay. Okay. He's the guy responsible for the busted record for Erica Banks. And, uh, you know, they came down from Texarkana, just was working in the studio a lot, and I'd go in and hear him. And, you know, but one day I just walked in and something caught my ear and um, mm. it was like, you know, um, it kind of just registered all at one time, you know what I'm saying? And I couldn't believe I had him sitting around this long, you know what I'm saying? Really? So I was just like, hey, you know, I'm going to go ahead and fuck with Smoothie right now because uh, shit, he jamming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you see as his potential is uh, right now? I just think he has, uh, his ceiling is real high, you know, his potential is, it, it, you know what I'm saying, superstar status. Cause, he uh, is a good sportsmanship, you know, he's a good sportsman, you know what I'm saying? He rapping the real lyrics, he got the real story, he got all the components that you need to be like a, a superstar in the business. And, uh, you know, he got the personality to go along with it. Yeah. yeah. And Smoothie, what was your reaction when Carl reached out? I was like, man, fuck it with you. Come on to join the team, man. Man, shit, it was just like, uh, shit, it was like, hell yeah. You feel like somebody, it, cause it felt like family already. Yeah. So it was like. He was coming around and yeah. most people, when they come around, they want you to see them. They kind of like get on your nerve. They do something irritating <laughs> or they like, hey, let me let you hear this real quick when you really don't feel like listening to it. You know what I'm saying? But it, with him, it was more like he was just sitting down and they play, you know, if they working on something, I come in here. It was never like a forced situation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then he had like little moments where he really was ready to turn up, get mad because of the music and stuff. You know, DJ might have messed up. Or one time somebody was, you know, talking about Sergeant J in the studio, and I didn't even, you know, he was like that. And he was, hey, I'm about to, I'm about to whoop this dude ass in the studio <laughs> right now. You know, I'm like, whoa, what you talking about? What happened? But um, you know, little stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying it all, and and then it just added up to one, one, one artist and one, and I'm like, shit, man, he got, he got everything you need right here. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's what's up. Yeah. So, Smoothie, what's it like, you know, having a team behind you like 1501 compared to when you were just doing it all independently by yourself, man? Man, shit, it's great. You feel me? They, they can see the difference. You feel me? You can see it. But it feel good, though, like, not having a, you know, I was like, it wasn't, I wasn't solo, you know, I had a, somebody helping me, Sergeant B, shout out to Sergeant B, mm -hmm. you know, but. You know, when you got a real deal label behind you, like it's different when you got somebody that believes in you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That support means everything. Absolutely. You really need it, you feel me? Like, yeah. see, you need this shit. Yeah, it'll kind of give you that extra boost, man, that you need. Yeah, to... and, and when that shit meet hard work, you know what I'm saying? Hard work and talent, see, you know what I'm saying? Who knows? All right, so let's talk about this new single, man. Chad Butler 2. Yeah, yeah. So I think we know the inspiration on it, but yeah. so just kind of talk about the creative process, how you came up with this one, man. Shit, man. I was, I was riding. I was in the hood. Uh, I was in the I was in the hood. I was riding through the hood. I'm on my way to the studio. You uh, know, shit, I'm, I'm just going through UGK music. I'm going through it. And I was listening to, uh, damn, what, so I might have been listening to the, uh, Play anthem, and it just it shuffled to the next song, and it was gravy. Okay. And I heard that, and I was just riding. I'm like, damn, this beat hard as fuck. I'm like, I like this shit. Pepsi on it, and it just hit me. I'm like, man, I wanna, I want to, I want to use the instrument. I'm like, nah, fuck this. I call my beat. I call Knucklehead. I'm like, hey, uh, bro, remake this beat for me. You feel me? Cause he had made a UGK sample before. So I'm like, hey, remake this beat for me. 
I'm on my way to the studio. He sent that bitch over. I made that bitch right then. You feel me? Like, on my way. And it was just like, man, it just, it represented everything. Like, I had took from Pimp C. Like, I used to watch all the interviews. I was a real fan watching the documentary. Just shit he was saying, just how he moved and what he talked about. Shit, that's what I took from it. I put it in the song just to pay my respects. Like, yeah. shit, I fuck with you. Nah, this shit hard, too. What, Carl, what'd you think when you heard it, man? You already know what my ears did. You know, <laughs> he got us to hear, you know, because he played it. Oh, I'm like, man, that's Chad Butler. Hold it, you know what I'm saying? But it was a different way. See, that's why I called Chad Butler, too, because it was another verse on that he had, you know what I'm saying? But he, it, well, he's kind of like singing on the, on the, on the hook, kind of like, yeah, uh, like. verse. But this one is like rapping. So, um, but anyway, when we first heard it, you know, I heard it in the studio, I thought it was hard, but then um, we had this thing, Music Mondays down in Houston, mm -hmm. a couple guys, and they played it on a real big sound system. And I, you know, just, they just played it randomly, like, uh, you know, like doing intermission or something. Yeah. And I'm just like, God, man, it didn't sound good on these speakers, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, when I hear songs like that that I know, you know, uh, can be like real good singles, I definitely get excited and it kind of, my mind just going to want to get the work mode. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the first single he's dropped on, under 1501, right? Yep. The first one he dropped, you know, he got a project coming out real soon, like all his music jamming pretty much, but just to kind of, you know, go with a format that we use when we break a new artist with a familiar sound, just to get you familiar with the artist, and then we bring you all the other good stuff they got. For sure. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Smoothie, what should we expect from this tape, man? Man, it's gonna, it's gonna, it, it's a no skipper, man. I know a lot of people say that shit, man, but it's really, <laughs> This shit really a no skipper, man. It's some different it's shit. It's like, you know, it's some different, it's some country shit. It's some real country <laughs> shit. I ain't even gonna say this, it's real Texas, but you know, it's the country, it's the country in Atlanta, it's the country in Oklahoma. You feel me? I'm speaking for all the country niggas like around, you know what I'm saying? Around the world, all this shit gonna be a banger. Yeah. I got some different shit coming, bands and shit like that. I'm really having fun with this shit. You got any features you plan to put on there? Or you riding solo? Man, it's solo right now. You know, we finalizing it. We, we, fin we finishing everything up. So everything, it ain't hundred percent sure, but shit, we be damn near done. We put with a couple it. features on there, but I mean, it's like we don't, you know, that's how hard we don't know. really need yeah. it. Yeah, I, but you know, yeah, I don't really need. It. I ain't never really done features, so I ain't really needed them. But you know, shit, if it'll come. And what about producer-wise, who you've been locked in, cooking up with? Sarge and Jay, everything been Sarge and Jay okay. and Knucklehead. And they both from my hometown, they both from Texarkana, so yeah. like, like to keep everything in-house. So shit, it ain't, no, it ain't no bullshit, we right here with each other. I feel that. Hey, they chemistry real, real good. Yeah. They normally be cooking up on the spot for you, or they, yeah, they have cook the beats up ready the, for you? or They cook up on the spot, they send shit too. Like, I'm a workaholic, so they know I'm constantly like, I'm constantly in the studio. I don't really listen to, I don't listen to beats and shit outside of the studio. I gotta, it gotta be right then and there. Yeah. I gotta be in the studio and in the mood ready to rap. So, and I'm, I'm in there like constantly though. It's like, we be on some everyday type shit and it's quick. So shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm just in there knocking them out. So they constantly sending shit. And Jay will pull up, he in Houston. So he pull up on me, he cook okay. up on the spot. Yeah. I love that shit. <laughs> yeah, it, you can definitely feel like the organic vibes when someone pull yeah. up and is able to make, make something from scratch just yeah. for you, man. It's the vibe. You can hear it. You're going to be able to hear it in the tape, like the energy. Yeah. The energy, because it's right then. This ain't shit. I don't write music. I don't write music. You mm -hmm. feel me? I go in and I punch in. Like, like a lot of people do go in there and punch in. You feel me? So it's all organic, like how, how I need feeling right then and there. Yeah. So what's the music scene like back at home right now? Man, it's, it's a lot of niggas rapping, you feel me? It's a lot of, that's like the new thing to do. Like I say, it's, it's sports, so it's rapping. And shit, I know, they, they looking at me now, you feel me? They seeing what I'm doing, they seeing I'm making moves, so it done turned to them people more. Like, they like, okay, shit, he, it, it can't happen, because we didn't think this shit could happen. Like, shit, I'm, I'm, this, I'm blessed to be here, you feel me? I'm on off the porch, I was watching this shit on, on YouTube at my <laughs> partner crib. I was sitting in the spot, I was sitting in the spot at my partner crib. You know, on the Arkansas side, we smoking dope, you feel me? Watching, watching Dirty Glove off the porch, so now a nigga here. So shit, you know, I'm showing nigga this shit possible, so this shit, yeah. it's lit back home. Nah, that's what's up. Yeah. What do you feel like it's gonna take to get that spotlight shined on your city then? See what I'm finna do right now. <laughs> what I'm finna do right now, cause I'm screaming that shit in the song, I'm screaming. I rep where I'm from hard, you feel I love Tessa Kendall. Yeah. you feel me? 
So that's all what I'm gonna do right now. I dig that. So what's some of your goals for you know your music career? What are you trying to get accomplished? Man, I'm reaching for the I'm reaching for the stars. So if I miss the stars, I fall on the moon. You hear me? <laughs> so yeah, I'm reaching I'm reaching high, man. You know I I don't put no cap on it. You know because I'm the way I'm wired is I'm a, I'm gonna set a crazy goal and. It, it, it might be the sports in me, but shit, I'm going a, I'm to a go get it. You feel me? I'm going to work so goddamn hard, I'm going to achieve that shit. And then it's like, I ain't satisfied with it. I enjoy that shit for 24 hours. Yeah. Like, I, I, I always want to, I always want to be from the country. Like, shit, we want to get signed. Like, damn, I want to get signed. That shit is unreal. Like, I, I had so many niggas say, well, you ain't fucking get signed, boy. Like, <laughs> shit, you tripping. Shit, I'm signed. That shit was an unrealistic <laughs> goal, like, coming yeah. from where we from, so. I'm saying, so now like I would, I celebrated that shit when she told me she, I was happy than a bitch. I went and got fucked up, me and my partner smoked, me and my brother knew. <laughs> and then the next day it was like, shit. Time to, time to go to work? Like I, I work, I work like I don't believe it. You feel me? Yeah. Like shit, like it's, like it still ain't true to me. Yeah, it's like, that's when the real work begins. Yeah, like, that's when the work begins. We on to the next goal. Where, where? Cause, Cause where I'm from, this shit ain't never happened. So I still wake up, when I wake up in the mansion, I be like, God damn, this shit for real. <laughs> Cause it still don't feel real to me, so I work every day like, nah, this shit can't be true. Thanks. Nah, that's, that's a lit right there, man. As he should, man. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, Smoothie, what has being a father taught you about life, man? Being a father? Man, come on, like, come, come uh, on up here. Yeah, come on up here, man. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Man, being a father, then like, uh, it showed me people watch, you gotta make, make the right moves, you know what I'm saying? And, it taught me to work. It taught that that's what part of my work ethic and why I work the way I do is because I got two kids, man. So, shit, they depending on me. And if I don't do what I got to do, you know what I'm saying? Then you know what I'm saying. It's kind of you know what's gonna happen. So, kids just put that work ethic on me, dog. Like, shit, ain't nothing gonna stop me. They like, I'm gonna maneuver around anything. Like, my thing is, I got everybody got kids. You feel me? That's the mentality, and that's my my, my sports mentality. Yeah. I'm coming into college, you know what I'm saying? We playing. And these my teammates up here. My other teammate, he finna come up here. This my teammate right here. This my this this my teammate. Peeps. Mm -hmm. Introduce your teammates, yeah. man. Let's know who he is. This too, my man. teammate right here. This is my brother, bro. This uh Zay, man. My nigga Zay. This is my nigga Peeps, man. We play we play Cali ball together. He's our all American, all American talent now right here. Okay. For real. But man, just that mentality, like she, when you go somewhere and these, these guys can tell you, bro, like everybody, you know, everybody got something going on, like wrong, like, you know, nigga situation might be for nigga might got three kids in college, you feel me? But it's just like that mentality, like, I know what I'm going through, I got to get me, you feel me? And nigga can, nigga can attest to that, like she, that's the mentality to take the music. Like, bro, I got to, Everybody got a situation going on, you feel me? Like, shit, I got to get me. I'm thinking about the kids, you know what I'm saying? I want to provide. Got to provide, so shit. That's what them kids do for me. They make me determined, work hard. Oh, absolutely, man. What's some advice you would share to the youth, to the new generation coming up right now, Smoothie? Man, don't let nobody tell you you can't do nothing. You feel no matter where you from, no matter how small the city, how small the town, shit. Long as you keep working and you do what you need to do and be humble, you know what I'm saying? Don't be too cool for school. You know what I'm saying? When you go out, shit, shake hands. Shake hands, fuck with people. You know what I'm saying? Be a people person. You don't gotta be a standoffish nigga, you know what I'm saying? Not in the music, but you really can't. No. You really can't. You got the rub shoulders. It's about who you know, a lot of this shit. So I'll tell them that shit, work hard and be humble. And don't be afraid to talk to people. Nah, that's real, because they'll try and blackball you real quick, man. Yeah, they will. Yeah, face. Yeah. All right, Smoothie, what's next, man? What, what what's on your play for 2022, man? Man, I'ma drop. I'm gonna drop this Chad Bullet Two video. And they're gonna introduce them, like, and let them know, like, okay, this Smoothie Poppy, this what's really going on. You mm -hmm. feel me? And then I'ma hit them with a tape and some more and some more videos, and it's just gonna solidify, like, this nigga hard. Like, she, I ain't missing. I'm telling them now, I ain't doing no missing, dog. Ain't no missing. You feel me? I'm, Bad song on that bitch, so I'm just gonna solidify that he one of them guys coming out of Texas. For sure. Hey. All right, you got a shout out you like to get before we wrap it up here, Smoothie? Man, shout out to Carl for signing me, man. So shout out to 1501 came and got a nigga out the mud, bro. Shout out to my family. 
Shout out to my brother, man. Shout out to Sergeant B. Shout out to Tessa Kennel and Muddy Water. Shout out to everybody supporting me, everybody bumping smoother, bro. I fuck with y'all. You know what I'm saying? We on the way up.